One feature that I was really surprised that they didn't include was shutter angle. So it's still adjusted by shutter speed, but pretty much any cinema camera, you can generally go into shutter angle mode. The third thing is there's no built-in shutter angle. A lot of cinema cameras, you can just set it to 180 degrees. First thing would be shutter angle. You can only dial in shutter speed using conventional shutter speed. As well, there's no option to view waveforms when you're exposing. There's only a histogram available. Unlike the rest of the cinema line, the FX3 does not have a waveform. It also doesn't have false color, which given its cinema classification is a bit frustrating. I don't get it. I just switched the FX3 from the Pocket 6K Pro and there have been a lot of people complaining about things that they felt Sony should have included in the camera but didn't. And I'm not gonna get into all that. But the two things that really pissed me off are the fact that Sony didn't put false color and shutter speed in this camera, but they wrote cinema line on it. Why, why, why? Why? It doesn't make sense to me, but a little bit of thinking, I figured out a way to add both false color and shutter angle to your camera. And before we jump in, a little bit of a disclaimer, I did figure out false color. I will tell you exactly how to put false color into your FX3. Shutter angle, on the other hand, if that's software related, I can't change any of that, but I did find a workaround and a way to use the camera and what it gives you to emulate shutter angle. So you'll see when we get there. But before I go explaining how to put false color into your camera, I wanna tell you a little bit about how I figured this out. False color basically is just the camera taking the luminance value of different parts of your image and assigning a color to it. That way, by just glancing at your screen, you can see areas that are red, meaning it's overexposed and blown out, or areas that are purple or black, meaning they're completely black and there's no information. So it's a really easy way to expose your image. You can set up a shot, set up a light, and if a skin tone is a certain color, or if the skins are a certain color, then you know that it's properly exposed. Now, Sony omitted this from the camera. I don't understand why. If you wanted this prior to right now, you'd have to hook up an external monitor like an Atomos and use that built-in false color, which is quite frankly, a pain in the ass. But luckily, Sony gave us a little update, a little, little V2 update, which allowed us to put our own LUTs in the camera. I can kind of see where I'm going with this. Now, a LUT essentially controls two things and two things only. A, color values of your image, and B, luminance values of your image. Now, false color, taking the luminance value and assigning a color to it, kind of see where I'm going. A LUT can do the same thing false color might do when it's natively embedded into a camera. Through a little bit of trial and error, I made a false color LUT that is specifically built for the FX3 and S-Log3. This is what the LUT will do right now. Okay, sorry, real quick. Um, I'm editing this now and I just realized that I never said that this is a LUT made to be put into the FX3. <laughs> I'm getting new to being in front of the camera and everything. This totally slipped my mind to say. So. This is a LUT that you're meant to load into the FX3. <laughs> I never deliberately said that, and I just want to clarify that. So, yes. So what this LUT does is essentially takes the S-Log3 signal from your camera, and then I took the official Sony S-Log3 to Rec. 709 transform, put that into the LUT, and then it sends the now Rec. 709 image into the false color, which gives you the readings and then it shows what you see on the screen. Now it's really important that these false color LUTs do things in the correct order because otherwise you're not really gonna get an accurate reading and you could misexpose your image because of the faulty false color LUT. Rest assured, this one works well and I went ahead and chose the Blackmagic false color scale just because I'm used to it and I found it works best with S-Log3 for accurate reproduction. Now to prove that, I went ahead and had my girlfriend model real quick for me and I lit this scene using my light meter to make sure everything was perfectly exposed according to what my camera was set to. And if you apply my false color LUT, you can see that she is exposed properly according to the scale. White skin tones tend to fall on the pink region with the uh, black magic false color scale, and that's where her skin is falling. So this is a very accurate LUT and I'm super excited about it. Once you put it into your camera, you can assign it to one of your function buttons and you can quickly flip over to it, check your exposure and flip back to a Rec. 709 transform in your camera. Now, if you wanna grab my false color LUT for your FX3, you can go ahead and grab it in the Gumroad description down below. It's 10 bucks, it's great. I use it all the time. I highly recommend it and yeah. Now for shutter angle, I'm not gonna lie, it's 
With my method, you're still gonna see a shutter speed in your camera. It's not gonna show shutter angle, I'm sorry. But what I set out to do was emulate what shutter angle does. Now, once you go from a camera that has shutter angle to a camera that doesn't have shutter angle, it pisses you off. Reason being is that when you have a camera that has shutter angle, you can set your shutter angle to 180 degrees and that essentially makes sure that your shutter speed slash angle is always correct for no matter what frame rate you're in. I could be shooting 24 frames per second and then switch to 60 and if my shutter angle is set to 180, I never have to touch it. I can just let it live at 180, which is what I did almost 99% of the time, unless I wanted a specific look, I would crank down the shutter speed to get more of a jittery action look. Now with the FX3 and the shutter speed, every time you switch your frame rate, you gotta remember to go back to your shutter speed and make sure you're doing the double your frame rate rule. So if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, your shutter speed's at one over 50th of a second. If you should change to 60 frames per second, you gotta change your shutter speed to one over 125th of a second and so on and so on, which is a real pain in the ass if you're shooting run and gun stuff where you need to be, you know, real quick on the fly. You don't have time to spend 10 seconds, five to 10 seconds between every change of your frame rate to make sure everything's dialed in. This is where shutter angle is awesome because you can set it once and just forget about it. You never touch it. I love it so much and it's, it pisses me off again that Sony didn't put it in this camera but wrote cinema line on it. It doesn't make sense. So what the camera does have are memory functions. There's three memory functions that are in the mode menu. And it just so happens that three of the main frame rates I would be shooting would be 24, 60, and 120. And what I would like to do is reduce the amount of time it takes me to go from 24 to 60, make sure all the settings are set, and from 60 to 120. So what I recommend doing to emulate shutter angle in your FX3 is to essentially go through and set your camera settings to exactly what you want for each frame rate. So for my M1, I keep it at 24 frames per second, at one over 50th shutter speed. I make sure my white balance is at 5,500 Kelvin, which is typically what I shoot at, unless I'm in a place where I go to like 4,400 or 3,200. I make sure my codecs are all set to what I want prior to the shoot, and generally just make sure everything's locked in. Then I go to the M2 memory recall option, and I set everything that I want for 60 frames per second, and then 120 frames per second for M3. That way, whenever I need to switch, all I gotta do is hit mode, go down one on the joystick, and select that mode, and it jumps where all the settings are properly selected for the frame rate that I want. Now, this is as close as I think we're gonna get to shutter angle in the FX3. It makes it a lot quicker, in my opinion. The only drawback is that it does revert back to the original settings. So if I had it at M1, let's say, and I set my white balance to 3200, but it memorized 5500. If I then jump to M2 to get 60 frames per second and then back to M1, it's still gonna go back from 3200 Kelvin to 5500 Kelvin. Any changes you make in one of these memory recalls, if you don't save it, it reverts back to the last save, which can be a bit of a pain if you're in M1 and then you jump to M2 for a shot, switch some settings and then go back to M1, it's gonna forget any changes you made, which isn't that big of a deal because the only changes I would ever really make are my white balance and with the Kodak and the FX3, you really have more flexibility and it doesn't take nearly as long to change your white balance as it does the shutter speed because you can set some presets in your function menu. So it is pretty quick. But yeah, I do think this is the closest we're gonna the shutter angle. I'm sorry if that was clickbait for you guys. Honestly, it makes it right easier for me to operate the camera. So I enjoy using it. So I figured I would share it. But anywho, that's all I have for today. Again, the false color LUT for the FX3 for S-Log3 is in the description. I highly recommend it. I use it all the time. Let me know what you think. And uh, otherwise, yeah, that's about it. See, see it.